Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on chemical equilibrium. We're going to talk about the properties of equilibrium chemical systems. We'll talk about the thermodynamic activities of gases, liquids, and solids. And we'll go through an example calculation of equilibrium pres partial pressures of N2O4 and uh, NO2 gases. The properties of equilibrium are listed here, and the first one is that equilibrium is a dynamic state, not a static state. That is to say that if you allow a system to come to equilibrium, for example the equilibrium between uh, NO2 and N2O4, then even though the concentrations of those species are not changing with time, the reaction itself is occurring both in the forward and the, and the backward direction, but at the same rate. The second property is that there always exists a driving force in the direction of the equilibrium state. So if the system is out of equilibrium, if you start with one or the other of these gases, or have an, a non-equilibrium ratio of concentrations or partial pressures, then there always exists a thermodynamic driving force to push the reaction either forward or backward in the direction of the equilibrium state. That driving force, which is measured by delta G, the Gibbs free energy of reaction, diminishes as the equilibrium point is approached. And finally, the equilibrium state is the same regardless of the direction of approach. So it doesn't matter if you start from pure N2O4 or pure NO2 or something in between. The equilibrium state is always the same no matter uh, which direction you approach it from. So we can define the Gibbs free energy as U plus PV minus TS. U, P, V, T, and S are all state functions, thermodynamic state functions. So any combination of those thermodynamic state functions is also a state function. And it's convenient to use this definition for the Gibbs free energy. In differential form, we can write, the, write out all the differentials uh, for dg, and a lot of these cancel. Uh, two of them cancel because the terms are the same, uh, but with opposite algebraic sign. Uh, the two terms in green cancel because of the definition of entropy as being uh, dq over t. And uh, the, finally, the last term cancels because we're going to impose the condition of constant temperature. So we get uh, finally at constant temperature that dg is equal to vdp, which with the ideal gas law is equal to rt over pdp, or, or we can rewrite this as rt d log p. And finally, integrating dg uh, from some initial to final condition gives uh, delta g of formation for any substance is equal to the delta g of formation under standard conditions, that is to say, one bar and temperature of interest, plus a term rt log of p expressed in units of bars. So let's talk about the equilibrium constant. Suppose we have this N2O4 uh, equilibrium with two NO2 molecules. The delta G for reaction under standard conditions, one bar pressure of, of all things, of, all, of both N2O4 and NO2, is defined to be the, uh, the difference between the delta G of formation of the products and the delta G of formation of the reactants. Same thing that we've done for enthalpy and entropy and so forth. Under non-standard conditions, we, we can use the pressure dependence of G to say that delta G for the reaction is equal to delta G zero of the reaction, that, that is to say under standard conditions, plus this term RT log of P of the products divided by P of the reactants raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficients. And so at equilibrium, uh, delta G reaction is zero, and so delta G zero under standard conditions is equal to minus RT log of uh, the ratio of partial pressures of products to reactants. And since delta G zero is a constant that we can look up in tables, uh, then that ratio of partial pressures must equal to a constant, and we call that the equilibrium constant K. So more generally, for any chemical reaction, we can write K as a ratio of concentrations or partial pressures of products divided by reactants, all raised to the appropriate stoichiometric power. And this equilibrium constant is equal to the ratio of equilibrium partial pressures or concentrations. The absolute values of the concentrations are actually irrelevant. Uh, it's the ratio that counts. And the value of the equilibrium constant can be determined experimentally or by calculation uh, if we know the delta G0 for the reaction. Now, 
uh, to, to be strictly uh, correct, the value of k, uh, the equilibrium constant, must be unitless. And so the ratio that we take of products to reactants is actually ratios of thermodynamic activities, not pressures or concentrations. But the values are the same. So the activity of a gas, uh, of an ideal gas, is equal to its partial pressure in units of bars. Uh, the activity of a solute is equal to its concentration in units of moles per liter. And the activity of a solvent uh, uh, is equal to its mole fraction, which in dilute solution is approximately equal to 1. The thermodynamic activity of a solid is defined to be 1 at 1 bar uh, pressure. So let's take another uh, couple of examples. The reaction of calcium carbonate to form calcium oxide and CO2 has an equilibrium constant, which would be the partial pressure of CO2 expressed in units of bars times the thermodynamic activity of calcium oxide, which would be unity, divided by uh, the thermodyna thermodynamic activity of calcium carbonate, which is also unity because it's a solid. And so th those two things uh, cancel, and we're left left with just the partial pressure of uh, CO2 in bars. Uh, for the uh, at the base reaction of ammonia with water, uh, we can say that the, the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of ammonium ion times the concentration of a hydroxide ion divided by the partial pressure of ammonia uh, in the gas phase. Now we could write this in the liquid phase where we'd have a concentration of ammonia, but for the purposes of this uh, example I wrote it uh, ammonia gas as a gas. So let's now talk about the equilibrium of uh, N2O4 with NO2, and let's, let's talk specifically about that equilibrium at 350 kelvins. Uh, from thermodynamic tables, we can look up the delta H of reaction by taking the difference of heat of formation of the products and reactants, uh, and that turns out to be 55.3 kilojoules per mole. The delta S of reaction, similarly, we get from tables, and that's 175.8 joules per mole per kelvin. And so we can calculate the delta G at any reasonable temperature by taking delta H minus T delta S, and that's minus 6230 joules per mole. Remember to uh, convert kilojoules to joules so all the units work out properly. The equilibrium constant for the reaction is E to the minus delta G, uh, zero of reaction, divided by RT, where T now is 350 kelvins, and so that's E to the 2.141 or 8.508. And remember, that's equal to the ratio of partial pressures of the products divided by the reactants, and because we have two moles of NO2, we have to square that pressure. So now, if we started with an initial condition of uh, N2O4 at one bar pressure, for example, and uh, no NO2, what would the equilibrium concentrations of the two gases be? Well, we know that um, the ratio of the equilibrium pressures must be 8.508, and so we can express that as the partial pressure of NO2, which we don't yet know, divided by one bar, which is the initial pressure of N2O4, uh, minus one half of whatever the equilibrium partial pressure of NO2 is, and the one half just comes from the stoichiometric coefficients. This is a quadratic equation, and so we can solve for the partial pressure of NO2, and that turns out to be 1.483 bars. Um, we can get the partial pressure of N2O4 by knowing that the initial pressure was one bar and subtract half of the partial pressure of NO2, and that turns out to be 0.28 2585 bars, and if we take uh, as a check the square of the pressure of NO, equilibrium pressure of NO2 and divide by 0.2585, we get uh, the value 8.508. So we know that this calculation was successful. Next time, we'll talk about the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, and we'll talk about Le Chatelier's principle as a way of predicting the response of a system to a disturbance from its equilibrium state. See you then.